year is a big one, and News 3 is where it's at. Covering what matters to you and your community every day. The Democratic debate, the caucus, and through the 2020 election. The NFL draft and the Raiders make the Valley their home this year. The Golden Knights, the Aviators, the Aces, and of course the Lights. And we're live from Tokyo for the Summer Olympic Games. From award shows to the big shows, we love to binge. Plus, no one has a bigger weather network to keep you updated. Thanks to your weather authority. News 3 is the station to watch all year long. Sex assault allegations, a fire at the Excalibur. Tonight, police say this woman made the whole thing up. We're live with the charges she's facing now. This is a, a giant, giant uh, effort by so many people that have the same exact focus. It's ambitious, expensive, and a fix for the homeless problem in the Valley. But there's one big question. Who's going to pay for the homeless courtyard makeover? The News 3 Homeless Project presses the mayor for answers. Decision 2020 Detour. News 3 is your traffic authority. From the air and on the ground, we'll help you navigate the roads with a big week for campaigning. Pigeons in MAGA hats. That's stupid. <laughs> That's what I say. It's absurd. The whole idea is ridiculous. Is it fair, foul, or illegal? News 3 starts right now. Most Americans believe we need to empower workers. As a matter of fact, you're the one who is at war with the culinary union right here in Las Vegas. And if we took off everybody that was wrong on this, off this panel, everybody that was wrong on criminal justice at some time in their careers, there'd be nobody else up here. I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. He just saw it there, fight night on the strip. The candidates throwing hard verbal punches out of the gate. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of News 3. I'm Marie Mortera. And I'm Latoya Silman. Stop and frisk health care for the culinary and the economy all tonight as six Democratic candidates make their pitch to voters around the nation from right here in Las Vegas. Of course, we have News 3 team coverage. From inside the Paris Theater to watch parties gathering both Republican and Democratic reaction, we also have former U.S. Senators Dean Heller and Richard Bryan and along with Mark Launer, Director of Communications for President Trump's campaign, all standing by in our Encore Lounge. In fact, we have a live look inside Bally's Las Vegas, where nearby at the Paris Theater, the two-hour debate just wrapped up. Candidates now giving their post-debate feedback. News 3's political reporter Jeff Gillen and anchor Jim Snyder joining us from inside that room there in Bally's with more. Well, we were expecting a scrappy contest here tonight, and we sure got it. I think the only way there could have been more punches thrown is if Ryan Reeves was up there <laughs> on stage with these Democrats. And Jeff, as we expected, Michael Bloomberg, the new entrant, was the bullseye for most of them. Oh, right off the bat. I mean, folks, look, you could not unbuckle your seatbelt for any moment of this debate. We're going to talk much more about it. What a debate tonight. Yep, all the candidates and their surrogates will be coming in here to the spin room to give their reaction. We'll have it all covered for you in the next hour. For now, LaToya and Marie, back to you for more news. And we have breaking news to tell you about a woman who police say set a fire inside an Excalibur hotel room and then lied about a sexual assault is now behind bars. Metro says a 28-year-old employee of the Excalibur faces multiple charges. And News 3's Lauren Clark joins us live to explain what police say motivated the crime. Well, guys, that suspect is held right here at the Clark County Detention Center as we speak. This all started earlier this month when there was a fire at the Excalibur. Officers say that a woman said that she was sexually assaulted there and left inside a burning hotel room. But two days later, officers say that was a lie. Police say the fake victim was motivated by money. It all started with a small fire right here at the Excalibur. A woman told officers she was left inside a burning room after being sexually assaulted. Hotel guests were worried. It's pretty shocking just to know that happened right under our nose. But two days later, investigators determined her story wasn't true. And now police say this woman, 28-year-old Avalon Lee, wasn't sexually assaulted and was responsible for setting the fire. Lee is now under arrest and is facing several felonies, including first-degree arson and burglary with a deadly weapon. The deadly weapon in this case being her use of fire. 
Lee is also facing a felony charge for destroying nearly $600,000 worth of Excalibur property and two counts of obstructing smoke detectors and fire sprinklers. Police also booked her on two misdemeanors, willful disregard of safety and false reporting of a crime. Now, we have reached out to MGM Resorts. That's the company that owns the Excalibur. They say they cannot comment on Lee's arrest at this time. Lee will be in front of a judge tomorrow morning. Reporting live here in Las Vegas, Lauren Clark, News 3. All right, thanks so much, Lauren. Two people suffered injuries during a multi-car crash that caused a big mess on Boulder Highway near Russell. We have a look at the scene from earlier today. Police say a vehicle crashed into a motorcycle. Then another vehicle struck a pedestrian. One person suffered critical injuries. The other suffered minor injuries. No word yet on the cause. Metro Police released video and 911 recordings from a police shooting over the weekend near Valley View and Cactus. Take a listen. Wait for your hands! Officers say Corey to Aburia threatened to kill his parents. An officer called for him to come out of the house, but in this video you see he walked out with a shotgun in one hand, a handgun in the other. He raised his guns at police. They fired him, striking him multiple times. That man in stable condition at a hospital now, charged with assault and domestic violence with a deadly weapon. First cowboy hats and now pigeons in Las Vegas sporting MAGA hats. An underground group called P-U-T-I-N, short for Pigeons United to Interfere Now, taking credit for releasing the flock of capped pigeons downtown. The founder says that they released the pigeons to protest the Democratic candidates in Las Vegas. The leader of a local pigeon rescue said that this is not okay. Glue a hat to your head. Glue a hat to your kid's head. I mean, it's the same thing. You know, we all have a right to live free from harm. It doesn't matter what kind of animal you're considered to be. You know, our language is what causes these animals to be treated like this. A city of Las Vegas spokesperson says there's nothing on the law books about putting hats on pigeons. In recent months, Democratic candidates for president took a Las Vegas homeless ordinance to a national conversation critical of Mayor Carolyn Goodman. And Mayor Goodman has an ambitious plan, as we know, for a homeless center that will cost $20 million. Tonight, Ree Cowan's Homeless Project uncovering a funding shortfall in the fund that the mayor's office said would foot the bill. All right, and so we're drilling down on that part of it and the plan to pay for the new homeless courtyard in Las Vegas. So this dilapidated building in the middle of a fenced-in area off of Las Vegas Boulevard is the city of Las Vegas' Courtyard Resource Center for the Homeless. Now, soon the city says this will be torn down, and it's going to be replaced with this. It's a massive $20 million center, three new buildings, permanent services, and a sleeping capacity of up to 800 homeless people a night. Well, when the city gave us these plans and announced groundbreaking in a matter of months, we were told it would be paid for by something called the Mayor's Fund for Las Vegas Life all private donors, but we dug deeper and we found private donations won't begin to pay for it. Tonight, we reveal who will foot the bill and here's a hint, it's you. This is a, a giant, giant uh, effort by so many people that have the same exact focus. The giant effort Mayor Carolyn Goodman speaks of is this ambitious and expensive reimagining of the Courtyard Homeless Outreach Center. This, the dream, and this is the current reality. Dilapidated buildings uninhabitable. The homeless sleep underneath and beside them. Taking the project from reality to the dream will take dollars, some $20 million. For months, the city told News 3 the money will come from private donations through the Mayor's Fund for Las Vegas Life. We asked to see the fund, the donors, and the money it holds. The city quickly provided this spreadsheet, and we asked the mayor about it. So the price tag is $20 million, but I did the math in the fund. The math shows as of December 2019, the fund has just over $5 million, and not all of it is cash. A little more than $3 million is in-kind donations. If the courtyard costs just over $20 million, the fund appears to suggest a $15 million shortfall. That's if every penny was earmarked for homelessness, and it's not, making the shortfall a long plunge into deficit. Why? Most of the donations in the fund were not given for the courtyard, rather for other programs not related to homelessness. The total private money donated for the courtyard specifically, just over $300,000. Remember, the city needs $20 million. How are you going to pay for the other part of it? 
We are going to ask and continue to go out there. We're going to ask people to come in and tour, to take a look and go to Los Angeles and see Skid Row and think about what if this homeless situation isn't helped and what if we aren't compassionate and they are now in my backyard and doing uh, with the needles and everything else that I don't even want to go into. Got it. So, but with the $20 million price tag for the courtyard and groundbreaking scheduled for July, and the fact that you don't have the money to finish the project, we, we where will. is it coming we from? Will. We're going to be out there. Uh, we can't, the city, be at fundraising, but we have this mayor's fund through the Nevada Community Foundation. But again, that is not enough. Not right now, at least. So we asked again, where will the money come from? In an email dated February 17, 2020, the city's Jace Radke replied, It is part of the city budget. We do not have to find the money. It will come out of the city's general fund. Translation, you the taxpayer fund the general fund. You the taxpayer will make up the mayor's fund for life shortfall. And again, you'll do that through the city's general fund. Tomorrow night, we're gonna walk you through that fund. and We're gonna hear more from Mayor Goodman about her frustration with finding the money and what she has to say about the county, North Las Vegas and Henderson and what they should do. And by the way, that mayor's fund, we've posted it on our website, news3lv.com where you can go and look at it line by line, see who the donors are, and see how the numbers add up for yourself. By the way, and let's put up the number right there on your screen, if you'd like to call in with a tip about the Homeless Project, our hotline 702-518-4840, or you can email us at the Homeless Project at the email address on your screen. A lot of data to dig through, Reed. Thank you mm -hmm. for doing that tonight. All right, turning to our post-debate Decision 2020 coverage now and the big night for six presidential hopefuls. Billionaire Michael Bloomberg making that last-minute entrance, and he was grilled on a multitude of issues from stop and frisk to non-disclosure agreements, even releasing his tax returns. Let's take you back inside the Bally's Las Vegas. We have Jim Snyder joining us now. Yeah, and uh, the media center is officially turned into the spin room. And let me step aside and show you the biggest gaggle of reporters right behind me. They are circling around the representative for Michael Bloomberg because, Marie, as you said, the attacks came fast. They were furious at times. It did not take long for the other candidates to light in to Michael Bloomberg. The new entrant into this race just made it onto the debate stage and they let him have it. Let's take a look. We shouldn't have to choose between one candidate who wants to burn this party down and another candidate who wants to buy this party out. We are sick and tired of billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg seeing huge expansions of their wealth while a half a million people sleep out on the street tonight. And that's so what we are saying, Pete, is maybe it's a time for the working class of this country to have a little bit of power in Washington rather than your billionaire campaign contrib contributors. Hey. So a couple of them there, and right off the top of this broadcast, you heard Elizabeth Warren when she said, uh, we're, we, who are we trying to beat? We're trying to beat someone who calls women fat broads, horse face lesbians. The crowd was kind of a gas, and she said, I'm talking about Michael Bloomberg. And so a lot of very pointed attacks on the former mayor of New York City tonight also took some heat because of his immense wealth. And as you know, many of the Democrats are running on platforms that say they're going to try to make a fairer system in America. They're, they're running, uh, you know, trying to appeal to people who make a lot less money. And at one point, Bloomberg was challenged to release his tax returns, something that, of course, has been an issue for President Trump during his presidency. And uh, Michael Bloomberg was the first saying, look, it takes some time to get all that together, and then made a comment that I thought maybe worked against him. He said, it's not like I can use TurboTax, which all the millions of Americans who do use that software might have found a little bit belittling and some of the other candidates candidates jumped on top of that. Amy Klobuchar first to say, well, I could use TurboTax to do my taxes. So a tax on Michael Bloomberg on a lot of different issues tonight. It was a fiery debate. He got a break in the end when Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg were going after each other. You saw that. But we're working to collect some of the spin in the room. Reaction to what happened between the candidates on the debate tonight. I lost Jeff Gillen in the crowd in there somewhere, but we'll find him. Have more for you later in this broadcast. Marie LaToya, back to you.
Yeah, so many headlines that came out of the last two hours, mm -hmm. Jeff. Uh, Jim, rather, <laughs> we will look forward to your and Jeff's reports a little later in this newscast. Meantime, as the debate was happening, President Trump barely mentioned it at this rally in Phoenix. It was happening at the same time. Instead, the president focused on his accomplishments in the Oval Office and chances of being reelected in November. There's never been a movement like this. And it began very early. It began in 2016 with that wonderful, beautiful night. You remember that, right? <laughs> that beautiful night in November. And we're going to have another beautiful night in November. And this time it's going to be November 3rd. Get ready, November 3rd. We're coming. And the president will be coming to Las Vegas tomorrow for a Hope for Prisoners graduation ceremony at Metro HQ. We have team coverage online as well. Our John Trainer blogged about everything that happened at the debate tonight, and you can read it on the front page of news3lv.com. A live look now at a debate watch party coming up. We'll have a live report with Democratic reactions. Kevin? All right, Latoya, we've got some pretty stable weather now, but rain is in the forecast, and it's about time we could use some free water. Your full seven day outlook when we come back. Now to reaction from tonight's debate. Was there a clear winner? What about the newcomer, Mike Bloomberg? Were there any surprises? Yeah, Gerard Romalo joins us live from Layla's Palace Banquet Hall, where local Democrats held a watch party. Latoya, a diverse crowd of Democrats here tonight, a couple hundred or so in attendance at this particular party, which was sponsored by groups associated with the League of Conservation Voters. They are primarily concerned with climate change and the environment. If there were people who showed up here tonight who were undecided, I think at the very least for them, the field has certainly narrowed. There were, as you say, a couple of surprises, a couple of standouts, and at least uh, one dud, and that's a quote from uh, someone who I spoke with a little bit earlier. Overall, though, if I had to encapsulate the feeling, the takeaway from this room, it is that they are encouraged. I agree with a lot of things Bernie is bringing to the, the forefront. Um, I, I think it's a little hard for everyone to buy into everything Bernie's saying, but I think it's the way the country needs to go. I think overall, um, I'm definitely seeing Elizabeth Warren um, speak out a little bit more. Um, and to me, I feel like at this moment, she's walking away as, as the winner. I feel Elizabeth Warren is just, um, her performance is superb. Um, her answers are right on. Her, you can tell she's um, given intense thought to almost every everything. That's why she has so many plans. I believe Bernie would probably be the front runner, in my opinion, now, from what I've seen him speaking about. Also, Biden looks pretty well. But, um, gosh, I'm kind of baffled by it all. I really I just want to find somebody that we can get behind and solidify the Democratic Party. So I have, uh, if I had to break it all down into three columns, uh, this is just an unofficial gauge. In the winner's column, it would be Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Amy Klobuchar tonight. In the place column, Buttigieg and Biden. And in the loser's column, it would be Bloomberg. One person told me the fact that he refuses to release his tax returns, TurboTax or not, that essentially disqualifies him as a contender for the Democratic ticket. Guys, of course, we will know much more come Saturday when the caucus wraps up. Gerard Ramal reporting live. We'll send it back to you. Yeah, this stage set the stage for mm -hmm. Saturday. Gerard, thank you so much. All right, News 3 is your weather authority. Kevin, great weather on yes. this fight night. I've got Democrats, Republicans, Independents <laughs> all behind what I'm doing. That's good. I'm going to be throwing my candidacy into the ring here soon. <laughs> yeah, keep weather going like this. This will be the platform I run on. Beautiful days in February. Temperatures a little bit above normal, but one thing is missing. And that has been water. And we've got some free water coming in this forecast, and we need it. Here are the totals for the first two months of the year. And in comparison to the last three years, extremely deficient. Normal would be 1.3 for the entire duration of January and February. But at least we'll add to that total. And it looks like we'll add a decent amount, too. Up on the mountain, most of the snow at the lodge has melted, and snow will be falling with this system, maybe 6 to up to 12 inches of the highest elevations when it rolls on in on Saturday. But this is only Wednesday night. Plenty to do between that. Whoop, there goes a cloud. See the, oh, there it goes. 
That was the one cloud we had today out over Red Rock. That's it. But what a gorgeous day throughout Southern Nevada. Mendoza Elementary, east side near Sahara and Sloan. They're at 58 degrees. Not much wind. In fact, it hasn't been blowing all day long and not much humidity either. Sierra Vista is near Rhodes Ranch near Buffalo and Warm Springs. They're at an even 50 and down in Green Valley near Wigwam and the Green Valley Parkway at Selma Bartlett. They're checking in at 55. Rest of the temperatures a little cool around the edges. Summerlin coming in at 48. Look at Blue Diamond out in the canyon. They're already down to 39. It is still 61, though, the base of Sunrise Mountain and Frenchman's Peak. Mountain sitting at 30. Sandy Valley at 54. Laughlin coming in, though, a mild 62. Not surprising down by the river. Officially a McCarran. Top temperature was 65, a couple degrees above normal. The morning low was one below. We always take the average, so the it'll go down as an above normal day. Barely. We've had one day so far this month that was exactly normal. Did have moderate levels of tree pollen. It is ash and elm showing up this time of year. Tomorrow for Thursday, mid 40s to get rolling. We'll work our way to the low 60s during the lunch hour, mid to upper 60s for a high and maybe a little breeze to 10 miles per hour around the middle of the day. Even that would be the top end. So we're clear now. We will be clear tomorrow and Friday, but there are challenges that are lurking and I say challenges in a positive way. Looks right now like that rain could move in as early as Saturday morning. Not the best news for NASCAR fans on Saturday, but it will clear out in time for Sunday. In fact, most of the precipitation should be through by Saturday night. So let's talk numbers. First of all, overnight tonight, mountain going down to 28, 41 for the low in Boulder City. High temperatures tomorrow for your Thursday afternoon. Mesquite at 70, Laughlin 73, 50 on the mountain, 76 in Death Valley. Our Valley tonight looks at a low temperature of 42 under a clear sky tomorrow, Thursday afternoon. Now we're starting to inch up 66 the high tomorrow and we won't stop there. 71 on Friday. It's when we get to Saturday that the clouds increase and we like our chances for rain. Some neighborhoods could do better than a quarter of an inch of rain and the numbers keep increasing as we get closer to the date as more water is getting inhaled into the system. Early next week we'll have some winds, but let's rejoice that some free water is finally coming down. That's right. All right. Thanks yeah. so much. Sure. Changes coming to your driver's license or state ID. How Nevada leaders plan to help you navigate those updates. That's ahead on News 3. Do you have your real ID? If you plan on taking flights after October 1st and you don't have a passport, you will need that ID. As the national deadline approaches, Nevada's DMV will be hosting several town halls to help residents get this updated ID. You can find those locations and times on News3LV.com. Whether it's a doorbell camera or a thermostat that you can control it with an app, a lot of people use some sort of smart home technology. But is it really all that smart? Security experts warn it's making us more vulnerable to criminals who want to hack into our home systems. A frightening example came recently when a stranger hacked into a ring security camera and terrified an eight-year-old girl. Pretty much every device is going to be hackable given enough resources. Well, what can you do to keep the technology that you use from being used against your family? To find out, catch Hackers in Your Home, a News 3 special report with Gerard Romalo. That's tonight on News 3 Live at 11. So who was the big winner, loser, and attention getter in tonight's debate? We have expert analysis coming up. Plus, the president is in town the rest of the week. And traffic, of course, is going to be a problem for some of you. We'll tell you all about it straight ahead. Welcome back. Our Decision 2020 team coverage continues as candidates react to their debate performance that just wrapped up less than an hour ago. We have Jim Snyder joining us now with the latest. Jim, still getting reaction there? Yeah, absolutely. And we've been talking so much about the attacks on Michael Bloomberg tonight, and there were certainly plenty of them, 10 in the first 10 minutes by my count. But not all of them were directed in hi at him. Uh, you have to remember Bernie Sanders, the front runner in this race, polling very well here in Nevada. And uh, most notably, he was attacked on the idea of Medicare for all, which, of course, has been a huge political issue in our state. I'll remind you of the flyer the Culinary Union sent out last week pointing out to its 60,000 members that uh, Bernie Sanders wants to take away their union health care. And tonight he spoke directly to those people. Here's a listen. So let me be very clear to my good friends in the Culinary Workers Union, a great union. I will never sign a bill that will reduce 
the health care benefits they have. We will only expand it for them, for every union in America, and for the working class of this country. So there you have Bernie Sanders reaching out specifically to the Culinary Union ahead of that caucus vote on Saturday. Really interesting stats came out today that close to 75,000 Nevadans have already voted early. Their choices have been made. This debate's not going to have any influence on them. But let's find out more perspective about how things went in that debate room tonight. My colleague Jeff Gillen is here with that. That's right. Uh, Las Vegas, please say hello to Michael Nutter, the former mayor of Philadelphia. Mayor, a uh, lot of Philadelphians in Las Vegas. Vegas. You feel free to give him a shout out. Uh, Got to ask you, uh, you're a top top person in the Bloomberg campaign. Number one, how'd your guy do tonight, do you think? I think Mike did pretty well. First debate. Uh, all the other candidates in one way, shape or form have been on that debate stage since July. Mike hasn't debated in about 10 years, uh, but I think he held his own, got better uh, in the course of the night. Uh, and uh, starting to get uh, his cadence and, uh, you know, his, his sea legs under him. I think all the other candidates, they're used to this format, used to jumping in. Uh, they each know each other as candidates pretty well. And this was his first time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we look forward to the next one. So what uh, tomorrow when you guys kind of look back and, and you retooling after the debate or whatever, what's job number one for Michael Bloomberg tomorrow to get ready for the next debate? Well, just... Literally, look at the tape, uh, you know, kind of in a different kind of way, a yeah. sporting event. What worked, what didn't work, uh, what, you know, we all torture ourselves. I've been in a few debates myself. You torture yourself right afterwards. Oh, that moment, I should have said this. That moment, I should have said that. So there'll be, I'm sure, a fair amount of that. But again, overall, first debate, first time on the stage. Everyone else has uh, been doing it for a while. He did a pretty good job. He took some hits uh, and gave out uh, a couple hits himself. And so we knew that they were coming. He knew uh, what it was going to be like tonight and uh, I think stood tall. Let's talk about the, the, the uh, complaints against Mayor Bloomberg for uh, some of the uh, sexual uh, issues at his campaign, some of the comments that he made. You mean at the company? At the company. I'm sorry, at the company. Thank you very much for correcting me. Um, had a, some would say he had a difficult time on that tonight. He, he got piled on on that uh, tonight. Um, is that a particular vulnerability for the mayor, do you think? Well, these issues have, uh, many of them are 20, 30 years old. They've been litigated a fair amount. He got through three elections in New York City, and many of these issues came up. I think the challenge is when you've said some things uh, that uh, are embarrassing, when you've said some things that have hurt other people's feelings, uh, it is painful. Uh, to relive uh, much of that and certainly thinking about the impact that you had on someone else's life. And so uh, it is a challenge, uh, but it's certainly something that uh, when you look at the totality of his service, how he ran uh, New York City and his administration, how he does run uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies, which he mentioned uh, on Bloomberg LP, the for-profit company, uh, ranked uh, first in uh, personal growth for people and second uh, in terms of happiness of employees in a poll that just came out uh, the other day. So he, you know, all of us have said some things that we regret. Mayor, we're out of time. Michael Nutter, uh, one of the top spokespeople uh, for the uh, Bloomberg campaign. Mr. Mayor, thanks. Welcome to Vegas. Good to have you here. So back to you, folks. All right. Thanks so much, Jeff, for that report. You know, joining us now, former U.S. Senators Dean Heller and Richard Bryan. We want to thank you and welcome thank you. you to our roundtable discussion here. Uh, we'll start with you, Senator uh, Senator uh, Bryan. Why do you what do you think about your party? I mean, they, they certainly came out a little feistier than we've seen them in the past other eight debates. Well, you know, Will Rogers said that he was not really a member of any organized party. He was a Democrat. I think we saw that tonight. It's spirited <laughs> debate. I don't think anybody landed a knockout punch. Mm. From my perspective, I thought Amy Klobuchar had a very strong closing. Uh, I favor the inclusive approach. In order for the Democrats to win in the fall, they're going to have to get independents. They're going to have to bring those discontented moderate Republicans who do not support the president. And so I think our greatest chance of victory as a party is to support a moderate. I've previously endorsed uh, Joe Biden, to be honest, I served with him for 12 years. But I think the moderates have the strongest argument to make to win in November. Well, they're all there vying for the yes. Democratic nomination, but ultimately there was a lot of division. Your take, Senator Heller? Uh, it was pretty aggressive out there, especially in that first hour. 
<laughs> I think it was to Sanders' benefit uh, because everybody was just piling on Bloomberg uh, for that first hour, and I think Bloomberg bounced back a little bit in that second hour. But I'll tell you, this was good for Las Vegas. It was good to have this debate here. It was great to, to uh, be in the green room. I think the only bipartisanship going on in town was in, that, <laughs> in, in the green, green room. room. <laughs> yes, but uh, it was it was quite the night. I think it was symbolic that it was at the Paris. It yeah. sounded like a bunch of European <laughs> socialists today. Well, well, let's let's talk about that location, yeah. right? I, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the culinary union, yeah. organized labor, yeah. big part yes. of the discussion tonight. And look at the backdrop, the Paris, Las Vegas, it could not be open on this evening without that unionized muscle. And no question about that. And the union is going to play a very important role, whether they will uh, choose to uh, endorse somebody before the convention. Right now, I think that there's a reasonable probability this could go to the convention and be uh, decided, you know, in, in a, uh, an old-fashioned way as it used to be, you know, on the floor of the convention. Bernie's got quite a head of steam, and uh, he's got the momentum right now. I thought Biden acquitted himself uh, well tonight. Uh, I, I agree with my, my friend here, Senator Heller. I thought that, uh, uh, that uh, Mayor Bloomberg had a pretty rough first half, did better, but in fairness, the other debaters are in mid-season form. They've been through several of these. This is his first attempt. I think he's probably going to get better at this format as we go on. But does he have the time? I mean, he came in this really on top because so many people hadn't been able to challenge him verbally face to face. And yeah. a lot of people thought, OK, coming into Super Tuesday with our caucus, I mean, obviously he's not on our ballot, but, you know, other states are looking at, at him to see if maybe he will be the new front runner. Did he did he blow it? I think uh, I think Bloomberg was the uh, the famously uh, well liked backup quarterback yeah <laughs> you know everybody likes the backup quarterback until he gets into the game and Bloomberg got into the game today and uh, I, I think he threw a couple interceptions is what he did tonight <laughs> but that doesn't mean he can't uh, bounce back from it I do want to have one theory that I throw out there I think there's a reason why the culinary union hasn't endorsed at this point and I think that they have a real split a mm -hmm. real split. In fact, I think the split is such that I think if Trump were to walk into a union hall here in Las Vegas, he'd get a standing ovation from everybody in that union hall except for their leadership. That's how strong yeah. he's playing down here in Las Vegas. Yeah. And uh, he had that rally in Arizona today. And I think yeah. that yeah. Uh, solidified, yeah. solidified uh, his, uh, his popularity out in the West. I have to disagree with my uh, colleague. Uh, I don't think Trump would do well in a culinary vote. My view is the culinary union is the most organized of all of the labor movements in Nevada, the most effective at getting votes out. They're going to be solidly in the Democratic column, whoever is the nominee in the fall. That's my opinion. Yeah, if I could throw out another idea also, and that's Sanders and this whole discussion yeah. on health care. Yeah. Keep in mind, keep yeah. in mind, China has. China has Medicare for all. Look how well they've done with the coronavirus. <laughs> if you're happy with the way that government is handling that virus, Bernie Sanders is your guy. Well, for sure, Nevada <laughs> voters, Democratic voters will have their say come this Saturday. Yes. So uh, much more to talk about. Guys, thank you so much for being here. You're quite here welcome. Thank you. And, and for the record, these two can break bread. I literally saw them having pizza together <laughs> here <laughs> at News 3. Thank so. you, sir. I, I, mean, I wish we had more time I think you guys. took an extra bite out of my pizza. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're not eating There's fair. Some truth to that. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Thank Sanders. you so thank much. You. And we do want to give you some reactions from tonight's debate. Uh, protesters, supporters alike speaking out about the race to the White House. Hashtag Dem debate is how you get involved in the discussion. We're also checking the political pulse of Southern Nevadans as well in a special Your Voice, Your Future town hall. Instead of inviting people into our studio, we actually crisscross the valley to give you the chance to sound off ahead of tonight's debate and Saturday's caucus. Here's what some of you said about the issues that impact you most. I'd say um, the economy. I mean, people's got to work, right? I think we have to control the borders. We still struggle here in Nevada around race. If you're a person of faith, it's not about fear. What do you think about the media? Do you think we could do a better job? What, what would you like to see from us? Well, we're media students. <laughs> All right, so as you just witnessed, uh, some people spoke out on a number of issues. Nothing's off limits, including us, the news media. And if you missed this town hall broadcast earlier today, you can watch it online. It's on the homepage of news3lv.com. We want to see how you are coxing this weekend, whether it is waiting in a long line or your I voted sticker. Share it with us. Send us your photos through the chime in feature of the News 3 app. Just click on explore at the bottom of the screen and then on chime in.
Air Force One landing in Las Vegas again tonight. And there is a traffic alert. Those roads surrounding the airport will be impacted until the presidential motorcade passes. The president will attend multiple events in our valley as this political week draws a close. News 3's Tiffany Lane live from downtown with more on how you can navigate your commute around it. Well, the airport is already advising drivers that there could be some significant delays tonight in that area, and that's something you should take into consideration over the next few days as President Trump makes his way around town, including tomorrow when he makes his stop at Metro headquarters around 11 in the morning, and then his Keep America Great rally on Friday at noon at the Las Vegas Convention Center. For security and safety reasons, Secret Service will not give out his routes as he stays in Las Vegas, but you can try to stay away from that traffic if you just make some effort. Can't give you exact times of how short we shut something down uh, that for operational security reasons, but I would say if you see he's going to be somewhere at noon, then you probably don't want to be anywhere in that area from 11 to 1. There will probably be another closure of I-15 in the mid-morning and then again as he leaves. So the best thing to do without knowing the exact route is during the a.m. hours, just stay away and and again, we do not know the exact time that the president will be landing at McCarran tonight, but just make sure to avoid the area if you can. Reporting live in downtown, I'm Tiffany Lane for News 3. All right, some good advice. Thanks so much. Well, our 2020 coverage continues beyond the podium. A look at the race to the White House from the campaign of the man already there when we come back. We're joined now by Mark Lauder, Director of Communications for President Trump's campaign. Yeah, with the next 2020 presidential debate uh, right around the corner, I'm sure you got some good notes uh, <laughs> for what your candidate can use maybe as he's stomping and going along, even here in Nevada this week, uh, when he saw his opponents going at it. What did you think? Well, I mean, this really wasn't much different than what we had seen in the previous debates. It was more fiery. Uh, they definitely talked a lot uh, over each other. They seemed like a bunch of bickering children in the backseat on a long on a long road trip. Um, but some of the policies were really the same, and, and that's really what we're focused on. When you're talking about, you know, Bernie Sanders and others that are talking about eliminating private health insurance, eliminating the health insurance for union workers, which is obviously something that's very big here in Nevada, uh, that's a major issue. And when you have a president who's also running on a very strong economy, with paychecks going up, with more jobs being available than unemployed people for the first time in American history, we're in a very strong position right now. And I think what we saw tonight from the Democrats reinforces that. And uh, we obviously know that the president wasn't too far away from Las Vegas. We mentioned that he was in Phoenix just a little while ago while the debate was going on. He was making the case to voters there. How does he make the case to voters when he comes here to Las Vegas tomorrow? I think it'll be very similar. And and one thing that we know is that when the economy is strong, Nevada does well because uh, because the state thrives when, when the economy is well. So why would you want to change horses on that? And when you look at what the Democrats are offering, trillions of dollars in tax increases and, and so many other policies that are just so out of step, they will take our economy backwards. I think that's the case you'll see the president make on Friday. Uh, you saw him make that tonight here in, in Arizona. And as he said earlier, he's not really worried about any of the candidates on the other side or whichever one of them comes out. We're pretty confident he's going to win that. Well, he's been going at Michael Bloomberg and Michael Bloomberg has said, well, if he's not talking about you, that's when you have a problem. Uh, do you think that the president, after seeing Bloomberg's performance, um, could be possibly worried about him? Or do you think there's a particular candidate after seeing tonight's performance that you think, okay, this is who we want to go against? Well, we don't think, view of the, any of them any differently than the others. And I think, I think the, the president, Michael Bloomberg, uh, exchanging Twitter barbs is more about a couple of New Yorkers, uh, you know, just getting into a street fight. But uh, Michael Bloomberg's problems uh, were put on display today. And if I was Michael Bloomberg, I would have fired the people who prepared me for this debate because he was, was ill-prepared for that first hour. And those questions were not new. They were not shockers. You should have expected them and you did not have good answers. And I don't think there's, he can light billions on fire and it's not going to change uh, his answers or his lack of ability to answer those questions before Democrat voters. Oh, Mark, thank you so much for your thank time. You. Much to talk about, obviously, yeah. in the months ahead. Time. We appreciate your insight. We'll be back. <laughs> All right. And we are giving you one final look inside. The, uh, the room there at Bally's where the ninth Democratic debate now in the books that was at the Paris, but where everybody's gathering now is at Bally's and we'll be meeting with the rest of our team when we come back.
Here's what we're working on for News 3 Live at 11 and the CW News at 10 tonight. We're days away from the public memorial honoring Kobe Bryant. Next at 10, a closer look at a new personalized tribute for the basketball star, his daughter, and their friends. Plus, County Commissioner, County Commission Vice Chairman Lawrence Weekly hosting a Black History Month celebration at the Smith Center tonight. We'll hear from some of the attendees and who they're leaning towards in the Democratic presidential race. Those stories and, of course, more debate coverage tonight at 10 and 11. Well, that's all the time that we have for you. Thanks so much for having us in. We do hope that you stay with us for continuing coverage on tonight's debate, as well as other top headlines. We've been showing you images, obviously, from inside ballets and inside Paris. In case you missed any of our coverage and those blogs posted put together by our John Trainer, part of our team coverage out there tonight, you're going to want to check that out on News3LV.com. That's right. And earlier tonight, our Jeff Glenn also got a really good interview with someone that is stomping for Mayor Mike Bloomberg, who really was on the hot seat tonight. A lot of people also talking on Twitter and elsewhere about his performance. A lot of people couldn't wait to see what he was going to say when he was face to face with other Democrats. Some people say he bombed. We just heard from a Trump representative who says that he thinks he should fire his team. But other people thought, you know what? Give him time. He's new to this. So the conversation continues. You can join that now. Hashtag Dem Debate. We look forward to seeing you on air and online. News3LV.com.